and I'd like to welcome you all and thanks for coming uh, this evening. I hope that we can give you some useful information. We are going to give you a lot of information, but we will try to help you to sort through this information. And our hope is that you will be able to make a, a decision whether or not weight loss surgery is something that you want to pursue. And if you choose to do that, we can give you a lot of help and advice how to go about it. So I'm very fortunate to have a, a very good skilled group of uh, professionals working with me. And we put together this group to make sure that we can help you to succeed. And by success, we, we usually mean not just to help you to lose weight, but really the main goal of this whole plan is to help you to maintain the weight loss permanently. So this is, this is a long-term goal. And the surgery is just one little part of this whole plan to help you to get to that goal. So again, I'm very uh, fortunate to have uh, associates and other professionals working with me who will help me uh, to get you to your goal. Give me one second. So we do offer different types of procedures. I'm going to go over these procedures a little bit and we'll, we'll tell you about each of these operations. But there is a, a, a pretty big selection of procedures. Some of them are outpatient procedures, uh, uh, minimally invasive procedures. Some of them are pretty complicated surgeries. We have a robot that sometimes we use that to do some of the gastric bypass procedures. So there is, there is a, a big selection and we, we will talk about that a little bit. But in order to be really successful long term, it's very important that we need to provide you with a lot of information. And part of it is the nutrition. We have registered dietitians working with us who are very experienced and specialized in helping before surgery to give you all the information, then to monitor and help you through the changes after the surgery and to make sure that long term you will be able to maintain the weight loss. We also have wellness counseling services. We have a very experienced counselor who you will see who will work with you because with this weight loss and with these this, uh, uh, changes that you need to make, there are some emotional issues, some other things that you need to be aware of and if needed, we will be happy to provide you with some help. Again, our main goal is to make sure that you will maintain the weight loss and we will prevent the weight regain. So these are different components that we need to talk about all the time to make sure that this will be a long-term success. We also offer you the, one of the very important parts of success, which is exercise. We have exercise specialists who are uh, very skilled to help to assess your fitness and to help you to design some exercise plans right at the beginning and then as you lose the weight your fitness level will increase and they will help you to change your your exercise plans to make sure again that you get the highest success out of this plan. So you can see on this slide that the surgery is just really one small step in this journey and you know we start at the beginning there and then you have to kind of go through all these steps because we would like you to maintain the weight loss so in order to get to that point you know you need to go through all these steps so this is not a simple overnight plan that you come in we do an operation and next day you lost the weight and and everything is done so this is a long process you need to be prepared for this and you need to be kind of willing to take all these steps in order to be successful. And, you know, I can show you several pictures here. And, you know, if you go next door with, to our support group meetings, you can hear some of the, our patients' experience that this can be done. And it really, no matter where you start, you can do it. You will be able, like this lady, she lost 140-some pounds of weight. Or this gentleman also lost more than 100 
20 pounds of weight. And also what happens in, uh, with this, this weight loss, not just what you can see, but someone like this gentleman who had type 2 diabetes, he had high blood pressure, he was uh, using a CPAP machine because he had sleep apnea. Once he lost the weight, he was off the medications, he didn't need the CPAP machine, he was extremely happy. And this, this is the, the uh, you know, time between these two pictures taken is probably a year and three months. So it's, it's a very short period of time where you can see what a transformation he, he went through. He was very happy, he was very satisfied with, with the outcome. And I'm sure if you asked him, he, was it easy? Probably he, he would say no, it was very hard because again, a lot of changes he had to make, a lot of commitments he had to make, but at the end he would say this was worth doing and he, he had no regrets or any doubts that this was the right thing to do. So we would like to help you to, to get there. So in order to start, we need to know what your body mass index is. The body mass index is a number that you can find. We have uh, the little gadget in, in, the, in that uh, folder. So if you know your height, you know your weight, you need to, to, to look up the number of, of, uh, that on the gadget, which will tell you your body mass index. So as long as your body mass index is over 35, you can consider weight loss surgery. Generally, less than 35 is not considered uh, appropriate to, to offer weight loss surgery for. And the reason for that number of 35 is that it has been shown that if someone's body mass index is higher than 35, the risk of medical problems like high blood pressure, diabetes, and, and you know, a number of other things will really drastically increase. So this will become a health risk more so than just a simple weight issue. So because of this health risk, it is recommended that something should be done at this point to prevent these complications. And the general recommendation is obviously that the first sort of line of treatment will be to start some sort of diet plan which can be helped with appetite suppressants, other medications, exercise, behavior modification. And I'm sure many of you, most of you know many of these, these plans. And also you know that what happens when someone goes on these diets that you will be able to lose weight, but generally the weight loss is limited. In other words, if someone's body mass index is 35 or 40, in order to have a significant success, you need to lose 60, 70, 80 pounds of weight. So with any type of diet plan, that is very, very hard to, to do. What's even more discouraging is that once you get off that diet or once you stop taking the, the diet uh, medications, it's almost always this, the consequence is weight gain. So permanent long-term success with any type of diet plan is very unlikely. So, so the, the success rate is very low. So we, what we offer is the weight loss surgery where what you can expect is that as you saw in those pictures, you will have a very dr drastic weight loss in a short period of time. Most patients can lose 50% of their excess weight in a year. That depends of course on which type of surgery you choose, but no matter which surgery you choose, definitely you will have a very strong, good weight loss within a, a year's time. So you can expect to lose about 50% of, of the excess weight. Also what you can expect is that if you have type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, high cholesterol and other problems, those problems hopefully will completely go away with the weight loss. And again, this comes very soon after surgery. What you can also expect that if you have other types of health issues like high blood pressure, joint pains, with the weight loss, those problems will at least improve if not completely go away. So as a result, most patients need much less medications. Also, most patients need to change their wardrobe because in a very short time they go through this 
very significant weight loss. And as a result of all these, you will notice a very significant improvement in what we call your quality of life. In other words, most patients say that they feel much better, they can do things that they had hard time doing before, or they enjoy doing things that before used to be a, a, a difficult thing to do. So generally, it has a lot of benefits, and the benefits come very soon after surgery. So it's a very uh, successful way to do it. So what can we do, or what are the, the criteria to make this a success? I wish I could say that you just need to find a good surgeon and that's all you need and you will be successful. The truth is that this is a very, again, a complex process. It has lots of steps you have to take and you need to take all these steps in order to be successful. But the most important one that we found was that you need to be determined. You have to be motivated. So this is not something that you go into because your uh, family physician or, or medical doctor has been telling you that, you know, this is a problem, you need to do something, go and, you know, see the surgeon. This is not something that you go into because, you know, your family or somebody uh, is telling you to do this. This is something you need to go into because you yourself decided and, and you feel that this is something good and this is something you want, and this is something you will do. So I usually don't like to see those patients in the office, or, or I have a long discussion with those who come and they tell me that, oh, my family doctor told me to come to see you, and you know, finally I just you know, decided to come and talk to you. I like to see those patients who come to the office and they tell me, like, okay, can we do this tomorrow? I'm, I'm ready for this, because I know that that's where the big difference is that if you have a lot of motivation, you will do very well. So that's number one. The second one is that you need to know a lot of things about this. So it is our responsibility to give you all that information and to make sure that we are available for you before and after. So we, you know what to do, what not to do, and how to do things. And I think this is one part where, you know, if you hear about some patients who had a gastric bypass years ago or some other type of surgery and then they, they couldn't keep the weight off or they were not very successful with this. Most of the time the reason is this, that they didn't get the information, they didn't have the knowledge and without that it's really hard to be successful. We can help you with the surgery and you know we are very proud of doing these operations here and in this hospital we do hundreds of these surgeries so everybody is very experienced anesthesiologist nursing recovery room the uh, surgical unit so everybody is very experienced in how to take care of the weight loss surgery patients so you, you know we can really offer you a very safe environment to to have this surgery done you need to be committed. You need to make sure that you will follow up with us, follow up with the nutritionist, again, to help you through the changes and to make sure that once you make those changes, you will maintain that permanently. And you need to increase your activity. You, you need to include some form of, of exercise in your daily routine. And again, we have the experts here, we have uh, a, a lot of advice, we can tell you what to do and how to do it. It is just that first thing that you need to be motivated, you need to be determined, so you will do it. So these are the items that you need to consider, you know, if you're seriously thinking about weight loss surgery that you will have to go through. So generally speaking, if your body mass index is over 40 or your body mass index is over 35 and you have medical problems, you can consider weight loss surgery. Most health insurance companies will accept this as a medically necessary uh, procedure. You need to have some records that you tried losing weight by other means in the past. 
you need to understand that these surgeries are considered major operations even though they are very safe and, and you know, it's, it's a very low risk operation, but there can be some complications. I will show you a little bit in the, in the next slides about that. But I think this is the most important item here, that you need to be willing to make changes and you need to be willing to keep those changes permanent. So you cannot go into this weight loss surgery with the idea of let me see if it works or let me try see if I like it. This is something that is a permanent change and you have to be really 100% sure that you will be able to follow this plan and you are willing to follow this plan. So what are the options? So once we sort of decided that, okay, let, this, is, this is a good idea, let's go ahead and do some type of procedure, then the next step is to, to see what procedures are available and, and what are the advantages, disadvantages. So one of the procedures that we do is called the laparoscopic banding or lab band procedure. I'm going to show you a little bit. All surgeries are done laparoscopically. What that means that instead of making a, a cut, an open incision, we use small little cuts with these long instruments and with a, with a video equipment to be able to see inside and we can do the procedures without making a big incision. So for the band, the lab band procedure, we bring the band around the stomach and we place a small container which is called the port under the skin. So basically what happens is that when you eat, the food first fills that little upper stomach part above the band. The band will create sort of a little narrow neck on the stomach, so it takes a while for the food to pass through. So while the food is sitting in the upper part, you get full, and then it takes a while for the fullness to go away. So basically you eat a small portion and you get full and you stay full. The band is connected to that little port, the little container which is about the size of this water bottle cap. It's very small, it's inside, nothing is visible. The, the port is usually somewhere around your belly button deep inside. So we can make changes of the opening size of the band by numbing the skin, injecting saline into this port and then the liquid will go into the band and tighten it. Or we can remove some of the liquid the same way to open the, the band. So we, we make these adjustments to help you with the weight loss. So when we first put the band, we don't put much liquid in it. Then when you come back to the office about six weeks after the surgery, we, we put some liquid in the band and then we would like you to come back every month or every six weeks and then each time you come back we kind of decide whether the opening size is helping you. So what we like to see is that you will lose at least five pounds a month. So if you don't lose five pounds a month then we know that this band is not really helping you. Probably we need to add some fluid in it to, to make it tighter. If you tell us that you don't get really full with a small portion of food, again, we know the opening is too big, the food just goes down too fast, we put some fluid in it. If you can eat certain foods that the dietitian will tell you before the surgery that stay away from bread, stay away from any kind of sticky uh, foods because, you know, this is like a funnel and if you put a piece of, you know, bread into that funnel, it will get stuck. So if you eat those things and, and they don't get stuck, that means the opening is big. Also, it probably means that you didn't pay attention to the dietitian's instructions, so we have to kind of go over the plan again. But then we put some fluid in the band to make it a little tighter. 
Now, if we put too much fluid in the band, if we make it the opening too small, then you will not like that. Then you will come back and you will tell us that now everything gets stuck. You have a lot of like reflux food coming back. So then we know that we need to open the band a little bit. So these are called the band adjustments and these are done in the office. So what happens if all goes well, we expect you to lose about five, eight pounds a month. So the band will give you a fairly slow weight loss. By the end of the first year, you should be down about 50, 60 pounds. The weight loss can continue. It, it, it goes on longer, but again, it goes at a, at a much slower pace than it will go with the other operations. And most patients feel fine with the band. They lose about 60, 70 maybe percent of their excess weight before they level off. And usually we see very good improvements in the health issues such as the diabetes or the high blood pressure. But with the band, it's a slower process. It takes longer and requires frequent office visits. So here you can see one of our band patients, she lost probably about 50 pounds of weight and she was very happy, satisfied with, with the outcome. So what are the advantages of the band? And these are things I'm telling you because we hear this from patients. So what are the things they like about the band? And I'll tell you what they don't like. So most patients really like it that this is a short procedure, it takes less than an hour, it's, it's not very kind of scary surgery. We can do it as an outpatient, maybe one night in the hospital. You can go back to work pretty quickly, few days out of work. Recovery is pretty easy. It's, it's very low risk for any kind of serious complications. The idea that if something doesn't work out or if there is a problem, we can go back and take the band out the same way we put it in as an outpatient procedure. These are things that most, most patients like. Also that the risk of any kind of side effect with uh, absorbing or digesting nutrients is very low. So these are the advantages that we, we see. Now what are the disadvantages of the band? Most patients don't like the slow weight loss because, you know, once you have surgery, you want to just lose a lot of weight pretty quickly. So this five pounds a month weight loss is a little bit disappointing. Sometimes it gets a little bit frustrating because you have to come back to the office for those band adjustments. And if you live far away, if you have a busy life, you know, work, sometimes it becomes a little bit frustrating that you have to keep coming back for the adjustments. But without really the adjustments, you know, it's not going to help much. Now, the band is considered a foreign body. So, you know, you have to think about that, that this is a piece of plastic that is going to be implanted. And, you know, the plan is to keep it there for the rest of your life. I mean, sometimes that could cause some problems, side effects, reactions, and then we have to remove it. So this is something that is sort of a disadvantage of the band. So as a result, we see about 20% of the bands, maybe even more, that eventually will be removed because either uh, the slow weight loss becomes frustrating or the band itself creates too much scarring or some other problems that, that we have to take it out. So all in all, in about 60% of the patients, the results are good and they are happy and about 40 percent of the patients who have a band are not satisfied. So uh, the band is probably the least successful surgical weight loss option but it is the least risky surgical option. So you have to kind of consider this if you're thinking about having a band. And just to show you this is just a busy slide to to tell you what, what are the complications. So what I want you to look at is that the, the first like three items are really the big problems, like major complications, requiring another surgery, having a heart attack, you know, something that really is, is bad. So those first three complications, uh, is, uh, the number is extremely low. 
It's one in a thousand or one in I don't know how many thousands, the first one. I'm not very good in math, but you know, 0 0.05 is like extremely rare. So, so these are very small numbers. Now, if you look at the bottom numbers, though, you have to think about that too, that 20% of band removal, about 35, 40%, you know, unsatisfactory weight loss, those are high. But again, those are things that are not life-threatening. Those are things that are not, you know, health risks. So, so the band is really very safe. Okay, so I'm going to show you the next option, which is the gastric bypass. The gastric bypass is a definitely much bigger surgery. And the bypass is done laparoscopically also, the same way as the band. So without making big cuts, we just make four or five little incisions. And what happens with, when we do the bypass first, we divide the stomach. We completely separate the upper part from the rest of your stomach. Then we take the small intestine, which is down below, we cut it, bring it up, and we make a connection between that little stomach up on the top and the small intestine. So when you eat now, the food will go into that little upper stomach and then go into the small intestine, bypassing most of your stomach. We also make another connection a little bit below that. Let me just get my pointer here, which is about here. So the digestive enzymes that come from this part of the stomach will come down here and mix with the food at this point. So the food will travel from here down to here without getting digested. So the gastric bypass will delay or change how you digest and absorb food. So as a result, your appetite will decrease. You will get full very quickly with a very small portion of food. But since the food doesn't go through the stomach, if you eat something that is very high in fat, sugar, any kind of rich, complex food, if that food goes into the small intestine without being mixed with the digestive enzymes, the small intestine will cramp. It will give you a, a very bad uh, stomach ache, nausea, cramping. It's, it's called the dumping syndrome, which is sometimes is very intense and very unpleasant. So usually patients who have a gastric bypass, they don't even want to think about eating any of those heavy foods at the beginning. Even the smell or, or the, the taste of heavy foods will not be very pleasant. So it will help you really drastically change your, your food likes and dislikes. So the gastric bypass is a, is a bigger operation, usually takes about two hours and you will spend two days, usually two nights, in, in the hospital. Recovery is a little bit longer than the band. It takes at least a couple of weeks. But by the end of, of three to four weeks, most patients are pretty much back to full physical activities. Now, the follow-up after the bypass is not as frequent as it's after the band. We see patients every three months, every six months, and then once a year. And we see very good weight loss, but we need to be very careful because we change how the food gets absorbed. So we need to monitor some blood levels of vitamins, proteins, and other nutrients to make sure that we don't run into some deficiencies. <clears throat> so what we see after the bypass, we see a very drastic weight loss, usually the first year. Initially, first couple of months, most patients lose 15, 20 pounds, and it's a pretty strong weight loss that continues for about a year. And then it, it's, it will slow down, it will, will kind of level off, and most patients fluctuate a little bit after a year or year and a half. And then most patients do well long term maintaining that weight loss. So the bypass will give you a very strong weight loss and a, and a very good long-term maintenance. 
So again, what is that most patients like about this procedure? They like that this is really very effective, no question about it. It gives you a very fast weight loss. It's a very predictable weight loss. In other words, with the band, you know, we hope that you lose five, eight pounds, some months you will not lose that much weight, some, some months you will. With the bypass, there's no question about it that after the surgery, you're gonna start losing weight and this is gonna be a steady weight loss for at least the first nine months. So if someone has type two diabetes, this is the best weight loss surgery to eliminate type 2 diabetes. So this is a big advantage of this procedure. And we see the, the most success long term compared to the band or to the other weight loss procedures. Now the disadvantage of the bypass is it is the most complicated or, or complex surgery. So it does have more surgical risks. It does take a little bit longer to recover. And there are some pot potential side effects of uh, so losing some vitamins or nutrients, so it's a, it's a little bit more risk long term. And some patients don't like this, what I mentioned to you, the dumping part, where you get these very unpleasant stomach cramps if you eat something heavy. So these are things that, that you know, are not uh, very pleasant. So. Just to show you, this is a busy slide, really, it's, it's kind of a medical stuff. I just want to show you that these are all those medical problems that are usually related to being, being overweight. The high cholesterol, reflux, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, type 2 diabetes. But what I just want to point out that the percentage of those patients where these problems completely go away after the gastric bypass, is very high. You can see with type 2 diabetes, 80%, sleep apnea, 70 plus, high blood pressure, reflux. So what this slide shows is that with one surgical operation, not only the weight loss will be achieved, but you will be able to hopefully get rid of a bunch of other problems. So the gastric bypass is really very successful. None of the other surgeries can provide this high success rate with medical conditions. Now just to show you the risks, same thing as I, as I showed you with the band, these upper numbers are still very low, but definitely a little bit higher than what you see on the band. So these are a little bit more serious surgeries for bleeding, leakage from one of those cuts, infections, dehydration. But then when you look at the bottom part, the satisfaction rate is pretty high. So, you know, where with the band we see about 60% success uh, or satisfaction. Here we see 70-80% satisfaction. So it is a very effective operation, very highly successful and, and very safe procedure. there are kind of two parts of this, this, this whole plan. One is the surgery part, mm -hmm. you know, the operation. Now there are certain risks and complications of the surgery. As, as you can see on those slides, it's not zero percent. So there is a small number of patients who run into complications. Some can be very serious. The second part is the long-term complications where you know, the complication is not related to the, to the operation itself. It's related to nutrition, to some vitamin deficiencies or some other problems. In our experience, and you know, we have done thousands of these operations. Any patient who runs into any of those long-term complications, usually the reason is because those patients are not doing something that they are recommended to do or they're doing something that they're not supposed to be doing. We see patients who, who end up with some ulcers in their little stomachs because they smoke, because they take a lot of pain medications. So those are the things that unfortunately sometimes we don't have any control of. And you know, we, we can hope to, we hope that we can help, but sometimes 
It just, we just can't do it. But again, as I said, no surgery is 100% uh, guaranteed, obviously, that it will be successful or, or there will not be any complication. But if you turn the question around to your doctor and, and you ask him on the, or her that, okay, so how many patients do you have whose body mass index is 45 or higher? And we don't do anything about it. And we just go on with that high body mass index. How many patients do you lose to diabetes, to heart attacks, to kidney failure? I, I bet you it's much more than what she can tell you how many they lose after a, a gastric bypass. So again, unfortunately, I can't promise you that there's not going to be any complication ever. But what I can promise you, the risk of this is lower than if you don't do anything for five years. So that's how, it, how I see it. Since we do these surgeries laparoscopically, usually the pain is very limited. It's, it's not much. So right after surgery, you should be able to get up, walk around. The next day, you take a shower. You, you, know, you, you can do some activities at home. As far as driving, usually for the first week, you don't want to be driving because you're a little bit sore. You may take some pain medicine. The most likely reason why you won't be able to fully function for those first two to three weeks is that because you will feel a little weak, you will feel tired, you will, might have a little bit of nausea, queasy stomach, you may not be able to drink enough liquids to, you know, keep your energy level. But that's going to be on a case by case. Some people can go back to work after the first week because they can drive, right? Yes. And, you know, depends obviously on your age and, you know, your general health. I mean, somebody who's very young and physically, you know, very active, probably after a couple of days you're, you're fine. Somebody who's older and, you know, has already some arthritis or joint problems and, you know, it's going to take a little longer to sort of bounce back. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more surgery here in a little more detail and then... This is called the sleeve surgery. This surgery is relatively new compared to the bypass or the bend. And this is kind of a different idea. Basically what we do, we reshape the stomach. We permanently remove about 75% of the stomach and we leave this long, narrow, sort of tube-shaped stomach. Normally the stomach looks like a, like a football and now we make it look like a long narrow tube. So what happens is after removing the 75-80% of the stomach, you, can get, you will get full because you know, now you, you only have 25% 20, of, of the, the, the size. So you eat maybe a cup of food and you will feel completely full and satisfied. The food continues to go through the normal way, so we don't really change how the food gets digested or absorbed. But what happens is that most of those hormones that make us feel hungry come from that bottom part of the stomach when that's empty. So once we remove that part, this will drastically decrease the hunger and the appetite. So it, it, it works very well, it helps a lot because you lose your, your hunger and appetite. So the surgery takes about an hour, same laparoscopic procedure as the others. Most patients spend one or two nights in the hospital. Recovery is about 10 days to two weeks. It's similar to the gastric bypass and then we like to see patients every three to six months during the first year. So it's, it's uh, not very long recovery. We see a good weight loss, 10 pounds a month, goes very strong first year, 80 pounds, 100 pounds of continued weight loss after the first year. And then you will level off probably a year and a half after surgery. And we see very good long-term maintenance. Most patients have an easy time to maintain the weight because their appetite has decreased, their hunger is down, and they really feel full with a small portion of food. So 
the advantage of this surgery is that we don't need to do the bypass. It's not, not as complicated procedure than the gastric bypass. Because we don't have that bypass, you don't get that dumping. You don't have that unpleasant, sometimes side effect of, of cramping. The risk of any nutritional or vitamin deficiency is very low because we don't change how the food gets absorbed. Compared to the band, we don't have the foreign body placed, so the risk of long-term problems is low. The follow-up is easier than with the band. We don't need to make, a, make any adjustments. And you get a better weight loss with the sleeve than what you get with the band with a less complicated surgery than the bypass. So we found that the sleeve is kind of in the middle, a little bit more complex or drastic than the band, but not quite as drastic as the bypass. So this is usually the advantages. Now the big disadvantage of this procedure is that this is not reversible. So once we remove that part of the stomach, this is a, a, a permanent removal, we take it out. So we cannot really reverse this operation. Also, the surgery is a little bit bigger than, you know, surgically speaking, than, than placing the band, so it has a little bit more risks. Now, this surgery has been done for about the past six years. So, we don't really have so many patients who had this done for more than, you know, three, four years. So, comparing it to the band or the bypass, we really can't prove that on the long term this is going to be as good as the other options. But I think we already have pretty good number of patients who had it long enough to see that the results are very comparable to the other surgeries. Still a couple of health insurances such as Medicare and TRICARE and I don't know of any others but generally these two uh, are not covering this procedure for the reason that they don't think we have enough evidence long term that this is, you know, a effective surgery for weight loss. So the risks are a little bit lower than with the gastric bypass, but there are some risks, you know, we need to remove that part of the stomach, we have a long cut, sometimes we see some bleeding, we see some delay of the healing, some infections. But, you know, if you look at the numbers again, one in, in 200 or one in 500 or something, so it's, it's an extremely safe procedure considering that this is a major, you know, major surgery. And so far the satisfaction rate that we see is very similar to the gastric bypass because you get a very good strong weight loss, fairly quick weight loss, and then a, a, a good weight maintenance following that. So we do see a good uh, uh, satisfaction with it. So just to kind of summarize these three procedures, this, is, this shows you the weight loss over time. So if you compare patients, let's say at 12 months after a band or a sleeve or a bypass procedure, you can see that the band patients probably lose, you know, half the amount of weight in the first year than what we see with the bypass patients. But then usually what happens is the bypass patients l stop losing weight after a year or year and a half, whereas the band patients, if, again, they are motivated and patient and persistent and they follow up, they can continue to lose weight even after two years. So it is possible to reach the same weight loss, but it definitely does take twice as long or, or even more than with the band. Any questions for the sleeve or the other procedures? You know, I said that the, the sleeve is not reversible, so it cannot really be undone. So if someone, the, the main reason why some, some patients go over to the bypass is that if that sleeve gets stretched out too fast and you cannot reach your goal, then we can change it into a gastric bypass to help you to get to your goal weight. Actually, 
quickly, I'm just telling you the, the reason, the way this sleeve surgery was sort of discovered or developed was that there were some patients who were very heavy, you know, someone who weighs like seven, eight hundred pounds. To do a gastric bypass is very difficult on those very heavy patients, plus it's very risky because it takes a long time and, you know, it's, it's kind of very high risk. So someone came up with this idea that why don't we just do this, remove part of the stomach first, and then we'll, once those patients lose 100 or 150 pounds, then we go back and then we finish the, the, the procedure by doing the gastric bypass. And that makes it safer because, you know, they lose weight. And then it turned out that many of those patients never needed the second operation because just by doing the sleeve, they went, they lost enough weight. So that's how it, it started. So then it is kind of a, a procedure by itself. But if for some reason it's not sufficient or you know, we can't get the weight where we want to be, we can do the bypass. Yes? Um, the size of your stomach after the bypass yes. versus after sleep. the sleep, is it the same size or? The bypass usually is smaller. So when, when we f do the bypass, we make that upper stomach very, very small. So that was the egg? That was the egg. The sleeve, you know, you have a longer tube-shaped stomach, maybe a cup or so size. But it is very small. I mean, you know, compared to the normal stomach, what you had before, I mean, it's extremely small, even with the sleeve. So you have to be very, very careful at the beginning to eat extremely slow and, and small portions. Well, if you have type 2 diabetes, because it's a little bit different for type 1 and type 2, type 2 diabetes, the bypass works a little better. So the bypass is the surgery that, you know, once you have the bypass, you can expect that you will not need any medications anymore if you have type 2 diabetes. The sleeve takes a little bit longer because the sleeve works more with the weight loss. So once you start losing weight, you need less medications and and you go off. So type 2 diabetes, the bypass is the ideal option. So as was kind of thrown around next door, your insurance company may require a three or six month weight loss program prior to approval for surgery. We'll go over those verification forms with you later, but we do offer those programs in-house um, since we know the documentation that insurance companies desire to see and we can give you that flair towards bariatric surgeries to prepare you, we do recommend our program. Um, after surgery, we follow up with you very intensively with every stage of the diet advancement. As you can see, we have our support groups that run monthly. We have them both at our Woodbridge locations and our Fair Oaks locations. Um, and we're always available via email. We have a online forum where you can post questions to our, question, uh, to our um, other patients that are out there. So we try to have a pretty good presence so you can always feel plugged in and you can get your questions answered. <clears throat> OptiFast, the dreaded OptiFast. So about two weeks prior to surgery, we do require our patients to use OptiFast. It's a meal replacement diet, it's low calorie. The reason why we use OptiFast, um, research has shown that it does a fantastic job at decreasing the size of the liver. And the liver lies right over your GI tract. So when the surgeons have to operate, they have to lift up the liver in order to get there. Now the liver is a nice reservoir for fat, and when that happens it can become really difficult to maneuver and to work with. So we use OptiFast as a way to get the liver to a more movable size so the surgery goes quick and smooth without any unexpected events. You get the benefit of losing anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds before surgery, which is nice. <clears throat> the good part, food, my favorite. So what does it look like after surgery? So for the procedures, regardless of which one you're choosing, we have you on a very similar diet, just the duration of each stage will vary. So for the first 10 to 14 days, you'll be on a full liquid diet. And what that includes is any beverage that's sugar-free, 
caffeine free and carbonation free. So like waters, broths, crystal light or those types of artificial sweetened beverages are okay. And then you'll also be required to do protein supplements and those are whey protein beverages that you typically find at like a GNC or a vitamin shop. After those 10 to 14 days, if everything's going well, we advance your diet to what we fondly call the mushy phase or a soft diet. That stage will last anywhere from four to six weeks. During that time, we start putting a lot of structure into your schedule. So you do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In between your meals, you continue to do those protein supplements. Now we know during that soft diet phase, for sleeve and bypass, your portion size will be about a quarter cup of food. For band, it's a little bit different. You may be able to do a little bit more because the band at the point of surgery has no fluid in it. So we don't know how tight or how loose that restriction will be for you. So we start you off with a quarter cup of food, but you may need up to one cup of food before we start doing band adjustments. So of your quarter cup of food for each meal, we want it to be very soft and moist so that you can chew it down to almost the texture of applesauce. So for each meal, we're looking at predominantly protein and produce-based foods. So for protein, you can choose fish, chicken, beans, eggs, peanut butter. Um, for the produce side of things, you can choose vegetables as long as they're cooked. And for fruits, they need to be soft without skins or seeds. So it's fairly, it's normal foods. You don't have to use a blender. Um, some folks like to, some folks like to use baby food. It's really your personal preference, but it's not a requirement. <clears throat> After those four to six weeks, scar tissue formation is about done. So we're ready to advance your diet to solids. At that point, you know, for portion size with bypass, you're still at about a quarter cup of food. For sleeve, I see it between a quarter cup to one half cup by that point. It really just depends on the person. Um, we can put in raw vegetables, the fruits with the skins and the seeds again. Um, what else? Like mixed nuts. Those types of more fibrous textured foods are okay to put into the diet. There are some foods that are restricted. The big three are bread, rice, and pasta. The reason being is if you think about a good visual is like think of a piece of bread in a glass of water. What does it do? It just blows up. <laughs> and when you have a tiny little pouch that's the size of an egg, it is going to feel very uncomfortable. So those types of foods we do not talk about putting into the diet until minimum six months post-op. At that point, they do need to be in the form of whole grains because your portion size still isn't that large, so we need to maximize the amount of nutrition that's going into that pouch. Um, anything that's dry, so meat predominantly, sometimes throwing a piece of chicken breast on the grill is not going to cut it. You can't chew it down well enough. It's going to feel kind of stuck, so you want to make sure whatever you're eating maintains its moisture. Anything that's really greasy, french fries, sausages, fried chicken, that type of thing, tend to not sit well. In fact, with um, gastric bypass, I have a lot of folks that are a few weeks out and they say when they drive past fast food restaurants, they sell, say even the smell of those restaurants makes them nauseous. So it's a really interesting phenomenon. Um, spicy foods, I find that's more of kind of a personal intolerance. I have a lot of folks that love spicy food before surgery and they do great afterwards with spicy food and others don't. So we'll have to kind of wait and see if you like spicy food. I can't predict if you'll be able to tolerate it or not. For high sugar foods and sweets, um, this is specifically pertaining to foods that have added sugars. So not naturally occurring sugars like in fruits or in dairy products. Um, but if you were to say eat more dessert style items, ice cream, cookies, brownies, um, those types of foods, can give you definitely a negative reaction. The most severe reaction is with gastric bypass, that's the dumping syndrome, which Dr. Halmy probably mentioned. Um, but essentially, it's a low blood sugar reaction. So if you've ever had one of those, not good. You feel really lightheaded, nauseous. Um, you get breakout and cold sweat. And the problem is, is that we can't treat it like we typically do if you have low blood sugar. If you treat it with more sugar, it'll make it worse. So you basically have to wait it out takes about four hours to pass. So it's a really big tool to keep you from eating those types of foods. With sleeve and band, you do not have those types of reactions. With the sleeve, what we see is if you were to try to eat something sweet, you may feel nauseous, but it won't be that severe. If you were to try to eat something sweet with the band, the problem with that is, is if you think about a lot of high sugar foods, they're almost a liquidy type texture when you eat them. Ice cream, brownies, they kind of just melt in your mouth, chocolate. Um, and liquids, 
there's no restriction with liquids, so you're just gonna flow right through that band and it can sabotage weight loss. So we have to be really careful with those foods. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Okay. So I've kind of already touched on this, the foods that are well tolerated, really moist proteins, lots of produce, basically a, a healthy diet. Vitamins and minerals. <clears throat> So we are very on top of your blood work. After surgery, we will be testing your blood work every three months. We do a full workup preoperatively. Um, and the reason being is because historically, bypass was not followed up so well, and so you may have met people who had had a lot of malnourishment. Um, that is not the case these days, and that's because we do a lot of follow-up lab work. Um, now, given that, we do have certain protocols for vitamins and minerals that you'll need to be on. This is pretty much the extensive list. You may be on all of those. You may be on some of them. With the band, it requires the least amount of supplementation. Given that it's the least invasive procedure, we're not doing a whole lot to your GI tract. But with sleeve and then bypass, you will see increasingly more vitamins and minerals that are needed. <clears throat> Initially, those um, supplements will need to be in a chewable or liquid form because if you think about multivitamins, they're pretty big, right? <laughs> and so we don't want those getting stuck or feeling uncomfortable. We carry um, Bariatric Advantage brand vitamin and minerals through our office as a convenience to you. Okay, so long term, what does it look like? I promise you will not be eating a quarter cup of food for the rest of your life. With that pouch will grow, we want it to grow. It's not sustainable to eat only a quarter cup of food. Um, it's way too low calorie. So for bypass and sleeve, by the end of the first year, your portion size will be about a cup of food per meal. That's where we like you to max out. That's a really great volume for weight maintenance. Most folks are done with their weight loss. The Fluctuation of calories ranges anywhere from 1,100 calories to about 1,400 calories, which we find most patients need. If you're really active, we will add in some protein-rich snacks, but indefinitely, that's what we're looking for. <clears throat> for the band, the band is always kind of fluctuating with your portion size. Um, your band adjustments happen about every four to six weeks after you reach the solid diet phase. And it takes, on average, about three adjustments to reach what we call your sweet spot. And your sweet spot is where you're able to consume about three quarters of a cup of food and you feel satisfied for about two to three hours. Also, when you're at your sweet spot, you will not be able to tolerate foods such as bread, rice, and pasta. So that's one of the, the triggers we look for, for that band to be adjusted correctly. <clears throat> um, and as you notice, that's last big bullet point, self-control. So the band is the smallest tool in the shed, as we like to say, and so it does require a lot of calorie counting, portion control, um, very diligent food logs so that way we can keep track and help you sustain that weight loss since it is a slower trend. <clears throat> <clears throat> 